I don't know what you guys are doing after this, but um, if like 11 or 12 of you uh, want a hula hoop with me. <laughs> these, are, these are my hoops. Uh, I know the guy that runs this place. Once you get into the hoop game, you know, you end up, uh, like me, I got lousy with hoops. You know, I can't keep them all in my place anymore, so I keep them over here. <laughs> By a round of applause, uh, how many people here tonight are just actively trying to keep their shit together? <laughs> My type of crowd. That's where I have set the bar for myself lately, <laughs> trying to keep it together. Uh, a couple of things I'm trying to do to make that happen. Uh, simple things. One thing I've been doing lately not rewarding myself for getting caught up on podcasts. <laughs> I don't need to take myself out to fast food for that. I didn't accomplish anything. You know? <laughs> Another thing I've been trying to do lately, I'm trying to not go on as many fool's errands. <laughs> you guys know what fool's errands are, right? This is a young crowd. Some of you guys exclusively you're doing nothing but fool's errand. <laughs> Here's a recent fool's errand I went on. I went with my platonic work friend, Susan, to see a Sleater Kinney side project band play in the back of an Indian restaurant in Pomona. <laughs> That's a fool's errand. <laughs> That's just a waste of my time. <laughs> but I'll say this about that concert. I don't normally talk about myself this way. I was hands down the handsomest lesbian there. <laughs> Felt very pretty. It was great. Another thing I'm trying to do to keep it together. Trying to have normal interactions with people that I know when I see them in public and I did not expect to see them. <laughs> so my friend DC, you guys just saw him up here. I expected to see DC tonight. I don't expect to see DC tomorrow. <laughs> but hopefully if I do, I'll just be like, hey man, what's up? <laughs> That's appropriate. <laughs> it would be inappropriate if I say, Hey, I'm just gonna go get some mac and cheese real quick before therapy. <laughs> because he doesn't need to know all that, you know? Just gonna go get some mac and cheese from Cuckoo Roo real quick <laughs> before therapy. I don't need to put the burden of that information onto him. But the sad fact of the matter is, ladies and gentlemen, that's something that I've recently said to a real human being. <laughs> and it was not DC to make matters worse. It was a girl. She had a yoga outfit on because she knows how to take care of herself. <laughs> hey, Joe, how's it going? I just got to go get some mac and cheese real quick before therapy. Because <laughs> I'm a fucking monster. <laughs> I started going to therapy like a year ago. I was proud of myself when I started to do it, you know, because it's a hard thing to decide. You have to, like, put yourself into a vulnerable position. You have to recognize a weakness in yourself that you want to improve. So I was proud of myself for that, but I also felt a little bit of shame because of how I found my therapist. And this is what I did. I, instead of, like, asking a friend for a recommendation, I went on the website for my insurance provider, and I got all of the therapists in my, like, close to my apartment. So far, normal. You know how I picked my thera a therapist from amongst those names? Funniest name. <laughs> Funniest name. It's not how you're supposed to do that. And that's why the first time I sat down, I sat down with Dr. Paul Barkopoulos. <laughs> Because to me, his name sounded like he'd be like a big anthropomorphic dog <laughs> who was also of Greek descent. <laughs> and I'm laughing, I'm laughing at my apartment going, hey, I came here to talk about my emotions, not to throw around this Lambo, Dr. Barkopoulos. <laughs> I want to talk to you about my issues with women, not learn how to make 
can't stuff grape leaves, Dr. Bargopolis. <laughs> It was stupid. It was a stupid thing to do. How are you guys doing outside on the sidewalk? Okay. For anybody that is in therapy right now, I do have a tip for you guys. Uh, if you wear a wig to therapy, and then a couple of minutes into it, you're like, JK, and you take the wig off, you still gonna want to talk about it. <laughs> For most of the session. It will dominate the session. So just be, just, just FYI. Uh, I threw a pool party last weekend, and a lot of people showed up to it, but they seemed really disappointed. And I think that's because instead of a pool, I have a DVD copy of the movie Grown Ups. Not as, it's not as, much, not as much fun as a pool. Are there any people here, are there any uh, people in relationships here tonight? Yeah, yeah. thank you for being excited about it. Let me ask you a question, bro to bro then. How long should you wait before you show a girl um, all of your Princess Diana stuff? <laughs> I feel like I keep I feel like I keep jumping the gun on that. <laughs> I just gotta learn to cool my jets. The thing is, my Princess Diana stuff is good. You know? uh, I wanted to talk about this. This is not a joke. This is just something I'm legitimately excited about. I recently learned a little bit of new slang. Uh, TMI. You guys know this? TMI, it means too much information. <laughs> this is how it works if you don't know. <laughs> so, so, so let's say somebody's talking about something that you don't want to hear any more about, okay? <laughs> you just put your hand up real fast like this, you go, uh-uh, uh-uh, TMI. <laughs> you basically, you're saying like, stop talking about that thing. <laughs> Don't tell me any more about that thing. You've told me too much, in fact, too much information. I love it. I love it. I can't stop using it. I'm using it all the time. Every conversation I've had over the past three weeks, slip the TMI in there. If you talk to me after the show, I will not be listening to you. I'll just be scanning the conversation, waiting for the perfect opportunity to just slip another TMI in there. I love it. I love it. Can't stop using it. I won't stop using it unless you're talking about dinosaurs. <laughs> because I'm, just, I'm endlessly curious about dinosaurs. <laughs> if anything, if you if we're talking and you bring up dinosaurs, this is what you're gonna get from me. I'm gonna go, uh-uh, D M M A D. <laughs> Tell me more about dinosaurs. <laughs> All right, this is the part of my set now where I'd like to air a couple of grievances. <laughs> Number one, museum gift shops. Hey man, why do you call me when you get some more astronaut ice cream and stuff? <laughs> what did I drive all the way down here for? A constellation puzzle? I don't think so, I'm a grown man. <laughs> Number two, fast food restaurants. Hey man, don't sprinkle a couple of onion rings in with my french fries. I don't think that shit is cute. <laughs> Look, if I want onion rings, I'll pay for onion rings, okay? But don't act like you're gonna sprinkle a couple of onion rings in there and that's gonna brighten my day. I got real problems. <laughs> It's gonna be more than a year until Game of Thrones comes back. How am I gonna make that time up? I don't know, but I'll tell you where the answer is not, in onion rings. That's it, it's just those two things. Uh, thanks a lot guys, my name is Joe.